Hello everyone and welcome to Planet Beer TV and episode number one of our Meet the Brewery series. In this feature, we sit down with our favourite breweries to talk about all things beer. Recently we sat down with Connor from Cloudwater as part of their Beer with Friends events. We talked about everything from their recent birthday celebrations through to upcoming collaborations and also the thorny subjects of craft beer in the supermarkets. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit us up in the comments for any suggestions of breweries you'd like us to talk to next. Hi Connor, thanks for joining us here at Hall Beer as part of Cloudwater's Beer with Friends events. Can you explain a little bit about this, uh, this series of things you've been doing with local beer shops? So um, a beer with friends came on the back of the pandemic, really. And we've always, as a business, tried to be as open as possible, um, try to kind of let people into what we do, explain why we make the beer we do, how we make the beer we do, and give people an insight into that process and the business side of things too. That became increasingly difficult during COVID because we didn't have that person-to-person -person connection with people. So it's about re-establishing that really. We, we love getting out, speaking to people, um, explaining, you know, the concept behind our beer, the process we go through. So it's really, it's been lovely so far to get out there, to have those conversations with people, to see people still enjoy the beer that we're, that we're creating, you know. And It's almost like you've been a band out on tour. You've had 14 <laughs> dates originally up and down the country and you've just added another five dates. I think it was this week, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's become a, a beast, really. <laughs> and when, when I first, discussed the idea with um, Paul, our owner, and um, Adam, my colleague, uh, who looks after the sales. Uh, we we thought it would be, you know, a small two-month thing and just get us back rolling again, yeah, speaking get to, you people. Out to people. Exactly, yeah. But um, more and more people have cottoned on to what we're doing and think, oh, yeah, that'd be, oh, that'd be nice here. Yeah. But, but it's been great because craft beer often is kind of isolated to urban centres in many ways, traditionally at least. We're making a, a concerted effort to get out to to smaller towns to to new venues to to places where i don't know these 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 kind of events aren't commonplace it's lovely to look down the list of towns that you're going to and see you know starbridge harborn in this area little tiny mm. places where cloudwater doesn't go there but all of a sudden you're there it's it's amazing for beer fans locally these 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 are the events that i enjoy doing the most i'll yeah. be honest with you i'm a mancunian i'm born and bred but Manchester's been spoiled for so long and there's, there's too many events almost so people yeah. can take it for granted and it's a real struggle to get people to go to events but to go to places where people really connect with what you're doing it's it's a great fillip for me but but it's lovely to share our, our passion with people as well in a, in a more personal way. Yeah I think that's shown as well we, we you know, I speak from experience here in Stalbridge but um the event here sold out in a matter of days, you know. Um, so I think, although cloud water, you know, is probably associated with the big city urban areas, in this, these small little places where there's a small but niche or a passionate following of craft beer aficionados, um, it, it, it really, really sold really well to them. So, you know, we sold out incredibly quickly. Um, and I think everyone who's going to be joining the event today is incredibly excited about it as well. So And, and, and feeling very lucky about it as well. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, you must be massively up for this because it's Cloudwater's seventh birthday celebrations today and you're not in Manchester you're in Starbridge so <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, I'm like I say I, I love these kind of things and um, yes it's our seventh birthday weekend so there's a lot going on at yeah, the tap room yeah. this weekend I was hoping to bring some of the beers with me but didn't have a bag big enough to, to bring I mean, we won't hold that again <laughs> yeah. obviously <laughs> Mortified about that. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you evaded all the hard work. Yeah, you come down here on a bit of a jolly. I did. I did all the hard work in the build-up, and then let everybody else take the glory. Now. <laughs> That's the way I like to see it. Um, I'm sure they'll put me right when I get back to Manchester for saying that. Um, we've done a series of beers. I think year on year, it's got bigger and bigger. We started our first birthday was um, I think it was Dipper V V two that was was our mm. was released on our first birthday. And every year after that, we released a dipper. But it's then, I think the last two two years, it's grown into this set of four beers. And because we're, because we've got such a passion in a broad range of styles, we've now we've included a hop from Vice this year, um, a dipper, a hop from Vice on cask, which is oh. a first for us, um, yeah. and has gone down really well at the tap room these last couple of days, um, and uh, an imperial stout as well because the my continuous improvement series has become such a talking point mm. for us. So. Yeah. Um, people kind of expect these things from us now and we, we feel duty bound to deliver, I suppose. It was fascinating to see a few months ago, I saw on the, on the internet, your whole schedule of beer production 
for the next 12 months, I think it was. Mm, mm. I'd never thought about a brewery being that focused that they knew what they were going to be producing six, 12 months down the line. Is that commonplace in the industry? industry? No, it's not really. It's, it's, it is isn't. it isn't. Some breweries, it depends on the brewery. We, we, we speak to breweries both from the UK, Europe and the US. So, for example, this, is, this has been something we wanted to do for a long period of time. But it also it has come as a result of the last couple of years. Mm. I think we felt not only disconnected from drinkers, but from venues as well. And we wanted to... There are a couple of reasons for that. Um, going into Tesco was was something that um, proved divisive, and yeah. understandably yeah. so, you know, because there's a, there's a big debate over whether supermarket beer is actually further craft beer or mm. whether they detract from independent businesses doing great things. Um, and another couple of things, that disconnection as a result of the pandemic caused us to, to take a step back and think, okay, so how can we help venues to sell our beer and to, and to, to engage with our beer? So planning ahead in terms of releases and giving people visibility on what we're doing, it felt like a positive step forward mm. in, that, in that regard mm. so that people can you know, plan ahead for what events or beer releases they might want to yeah. get, get, get involved in, mm. plan their spend, you know, both as drinkers and as venues, because... There's a lot of beer out there now, and it's it's very difficult to know what to prioritise. Really, you're, you're yeah. uh, somebody who buys a lot of beer. You almost have to say, yeah, I'm going to invest in this series or not not this one. You ha- you can't have it all, can you? As much as we'd like to, exactly. You can't drink everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite interested in your thoughts around how your your, your beer do become events. Um, there's numerous breweries who have event beers. I mean, we've just mm. had the all seeing, all all dancing putty release. <laughs> Um, which is almost mythical <laughs> now, um, but you, you do your own event series as well, your, your birthday mm. stuff notwithstanding, but things like Chubbles as well, Space yeah. to Nine as well. So what, what are your thoughts around the effort you put into that? Are you constantly improving your recipes? You're always trying to do new things with those. How do you define those events? So, yeah, they, they're really important to us. We did a series called Together Again um, mm. late last year, which was similar to Putin that had a coordinated national launch. And the way people engage with that and the feedback we got from venues in that it worked for them because it put a spotlight on what they were doing was was um, something that gave us that focus to, okay, so for any big release like Troubles, um, it's a good case in point. It, it, it's, it's really helpful to build in that enthusiasm mm. if you have a coordinated launch and, and look at it as an event showpiece in many ways. It's... We, our beers, it's, it's hard to live up to those expectations sometimes. Yeah. You know, with Troubles is one of those where we feel the pressure to nail it yeah. every year. Like, like Verdon do with Putty. Yeah. And people will analyse every minute detail oh, yeah. of that beer. <laughs> <You are not laughs> wrong. Even we do, to be honest. But um, but it's it's a kind of expectation we want to live up to because I think it does serve, it serves us well. It serves you well, I think, and, and, and hopefully the drinkers too. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, it, it feels that those events are uh, maybe not by design, but certainly by the way it's become. It's yeah. become really important for smaller beer shops because in quieter periods, or you know, January and Putty and things like that, for example, I shouldn't keep mentioning Putty on that. Um, oh, but, no, we're happy to. It's a great beer. <laughs> uh, but in January, that becomes a bit of a fixture and it almost enables smaller beer shops who traditionally probably would have a really poor January, um, try January, <laughs> uh, to get, get that extra income in and they can plan yeah. around that. And the, the, I think the same thing comes with your, your event series as well. So that's really exciting. So or, I, I don't know if it has been by design, but it's, it seems to be more of that case now where mm. it's geared towards the more independent, the smaller bottle shops that can very much um, profit. I guess of the of these plan releases, so it's it's, it's really sure. exciting for us. Yeah, I, I messaged Adam after the Verdant, uh, Adam at Verdant after the putty release and said you, you nailed this. It was yeah. a, it was a great job. The the Smashed everything it. that was around built around it in terms of the artwork, in terms of the promotion, in terms of the, the I mean the beer itself was stunning. Um, it's it was really well executed. Mm. I think and the, I think they did a good, really good job of serving venues in that way. I think the biggest thing they managed to do is pull off the marketing thing because mm. everybody wants it and if somewhere is sold out it makes you want it even more the whole spin yeah. around it is fantastic I think that's better than the beer almost and the beer, the beer has to be good to justify yeah. that Still good. So, yeah. so so I think with uh, Troubles is, is probably our best example yeah. of that equivalent where it was a beer that captured the kind of zeitgeist at the time yeah. um, it really got people excited about what we were doing. I remember I wasn't working for Cloudwater at the time, but because of, I've lived in Manchester all my life, I've, I've drank the beer since day, day one. Mm. 
But seeing people ex on, on Chubble, Chubble's release day for the first time, my word, the barrel store tap room, it was just, it was bouncing. Yeah. People were so giddy and excited. And we, I think Paul and the team realised at that stage, we've got something here. Mm, yeah. and, and it will be the same with Verdant, with Putty. It, the beer became that self-fulfilling prophecy in the yeah, sense yeah, that it's, it's something that justified the hype. And, and year in, year out, people people really kind of go seeking that beer. And the mm. same with the Chibbles, that's why we keep it a yearly release as well. Yeah. I think Cloudwater is one of those beer brands that I think most people can remember when they first had their first Cloudwater. Yeah. Uh, I certainly can. Yeah. Um, I can't remember where I was, but I remember the beer it was. And it was, it was a bit of a game changer. Um, and it's, I think you were saying before, not, even in Manchester, some people don't know who Cloudwater are. Mm. So I know it's very specific to the, the, the beer, uh, the beer, Fandom, I guess, but um, the, the sort of buzz around Cloud Audit, Cloud Audit when they first started releasing regularly was palpable, really. And it certainly helped myself and Hannah, my wife, get into the craft beer scene and you know led us to open this place eventually. So there's, there's, I think there's a long legacy of of what Cloud Audit has done, and it's sort of embedded in in the, the independent world. So it's it's, it's, um, it's fantastic stuff. Yeah. Really appreciate that. I, I mean, it's it's very rewarding to hear that, and and. Um, to come back to the question about the beer with friends as a series, this was attempt, yeah, an attempt to tap into that early excitement that we built as well. Mm -hmm. Because what was what was key to that um, push early on was that Paul himself, as the owner of the business, was going out and doing these events on a regular, regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, we 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 made an attempt to engage with people from day one and to to not expect people to just enjoy our beer here we made this it's great yeah drink it he wanted to go and explain the intention behind every beer and make those connections with people and i think that was really important in, in building that momentum um, and with the, the dipper v series is 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 what people always go back to as the defining series of beers in our history and rightly so mm -hmm. but that the coordinated launches behind each of those as well again an, an attempt to, to give coverage across the country um, in scotland as well in wales to to Kind of give that that full experience to the, to the crappy drinking public, I yeah. suppose, was was so crucial to what to what was built early on. Yeah, I think it's defined that synergy that people come to expect now between brewers and drinkers in, in this industry. So uh, yeah, it's as I say, the legacy's legacy's there. For it's, sure. it's interesting when you talk about that link with the people because Cloudwater not only <clears throat> they've got that great reputation about their beers, they've also got a big reputation for being ethically conscious and human-centred in everything you do. And that that comes across in your wanting to go out and meet the people as well. Um, so working for Cloudwater, you think, sounds wonderful. Is it as good? <laughs> Is it as good as we might think it would be? Well, it was that, it was that kind of ethos that pulled me to the brewery. I, I wasn't working in beer before um, I took the job at Cloudwater. Although I had been, I, I founded Man and ran Man Manchester, Manchester Beer Week as well. So, so there was, I did have that huge interest in beer when I was blogging at the time, but I never thought I was going to turn it into my career. Right. But it, Cloudwater did pull me in in that respect because of those values. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's a great place to work because there's a, there's a, a, a an attention to detail and a scrutiny on everything we do, whether that's the way we treat our staff or, or the way we make our beer yeah. and I really appreciate that that's that's something as as a, a professional myself I, I take pride in every little detail in what I do so it, it's there's a there's a nice synergy there mm -hmm. um, it's been the last couple of years have been tough though in the mm -hmm. industry generally and that's I think I speak for a lot of people um, at other breweries too um, it's been I, from the from the from March 20, uh, 2020 on the back of a high of friends and family and beer I was I was a lead organizer on that festival too, so the, the kind of the, the the buzz I felt after of nailing yeah. it second year, yeah. given the, the problems we had first year, <laughs> um, was 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 brilliant. But then this high was just totally decimated by what came next and the panic of where do we go mm -hmm. from here? What mm -hmm. do we do? And that has alleviated a little bit, but the industry is still a very uncertain place at the moment. So. It's we're as a brewery, even seven years old, are trying to still trying to find our feet in the new normal, for want of a better phrase mm. to, to describe what we're faced with now. Yeah, absolutely. I think will normal ever come back? We don't know, but um, yeah, <laughs> did I, I, normal ever exist? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, it, it, it knits for these these events in the industry, these these small little touch points that you, you have with your customers and your retailers and people like that. I think are going to be absolutely crucial going forward as well. I don't think that's going to change. In fact, I think it's probably adapted the way that we're going to be working going forward with brewers. So um, yeah, I think. We'll call it an exciting future. And talking about the future, where would you want Cloudwater to be in, say, five years' time from now? Um, I think at the moment we we want to kind of steady steady things and yeah. find some kind of certainty. Yeah. We uh, it's a part of what we did at the end of last year was started to plan forward for the coming years, and I, and I suppose really nothing more than delivering on the values that we that we espouse. That's that's the important thing to us, both in terms of delivering on them for our staff and for the people that work within the company, because they need security, certainty, and yeah. and to feel like they're part of something that matters, but also to deliver on that for the community as a whole. I think we're we're in a, we've been in, been in a very uncertain time, and I feel like we have to try and find ways to work together as a, a larger community to to build awareness of what we do and connect with more people because still we're only a, we're a tiny niche aren't we yeah people think of craft brewery especially the bigger ones like yourself as being big businesses but really Far from you're not are you? <laughs> no. I mean we forget this sometimes we're, we're a pretty small still yeah. really so I mean you look at Thornbridge or the, the breweries like that who've been going for like they're many many times bigger than us um Daya are bigger than us now and Verdant have produced more beer than us last year mm-hmm. for example in to give to give context to what we do um we're still we're we're a kind of small to medium business that's just trying to find <laughs> you know they're, they're going through all those teething problems that any business of this size goes through you know implementing different elements of structure trying to to do better by staff and customers and, and and suppliers you know it's 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 a challenge <laughs> but but one that we've kind of relished taking really yeah uh, you know i think you, you you may feel small to medium size but uh, uh, you know your branding and the way you present yourself sort of betrays that a little bit because you, you come across significantly more again, again well significantly bigger but you also you have much more touch points and contact with the industry so part of that is obviously when you're Helping and sponsoring, nurturing new breweries and doing collaborations with those guys. So, is it any plans around that? that yeah, very much so, actually. The, the, this the, this last couple of weeks, we've been discussing the next iteration of Together Again, um, and that will deliberately focus on four, maybe five breweries who are either very small or very very regional, like ultra regional. Do we know who they are yet? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can, I can, I can. Um, so, Time and Tide down in um, Kent, we're, we're yeah. going to be working with them. Um, We've uh, hops and dots um, yep. up in the northeast, yep. uh, do, doing great things in in kind of you know like I, lo- I love that focus on kind of bringing craft beer to, to visually impaired people yeah. and, be, yep. and making it more accessible in that in that respect. Awesome. Um, love what they love what they're doing. So cool. um, Chain House in um, kind of Preston area. Yep. So he's been working on a tiny tiny scale, but making some kind of knockout beer. He's, like, done, he's done some. Very good collaboration the last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, and, and justifiably so. Out. They were knockout. Yeah, he's um, his the stuff he produces himself is is stunning. Yeah. Um, for given that you know he does this on top of a full time job, um, yeah. it's so it'd be lovely to work with him and um, help you know sort of bring through some of his ideas onto at the kind of the bigger stage in the sense of working on our our kit and cool. um, we're yeah selling beer to our audience. It'll be it'll be a lot of fun. That's exciting. We did so in the last one. Um, we worked with, um, like working with Wild Horse, for example, out yeah. in um, Clandidno. It's, mm-hmm. It was really nice to see what they were doing for their local audience. And that, that collaboration brought all their strengths to, to a much wider audience, which it hadn't been their focus because because they are sort of hyper-local and um, working in a town where you, you get a lot of summer trade through tourism, for example. So they didn't really need to kind of seek the wider UK market, but it, it has been a, a really nice um, way to open out and their, their a, brewery. And, and has their business developed now because of the link up? So, so, so it's it, you know partly it's it, their, their beer is good enough, and they've been moving in that direction anyway. But but I think the, the feedback we've had from them is that working with us, and it's been mutually beneficial, yeah. I should say actually, but working with us has helped them to to kind of just gener- generate more awareness around their brand they're going through an expansion at the moment which is really nice to see yeah um so i love what those guys do yeah 
Yeah, they, they are starting to become more. Um, <laughs> Like you see them pop up more and more, mm. certainly marketing, and you know, they do quite a lot of collaborations. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So you are seeing their, their branding pop up more than you would say even six months ago. So that, that, that's really good. So we touched briefly on how your beers were in supermarkets earlier, and you're now not in supermarkets mm-hmm. as a result of what happened with the Brewdog documentary that came out recently. Um, and you've you're, the beers that were in the supermarkets were brewed at the Brewdog plants. That's all. That's all stopped now. I take it. Yes. So um, it's, it's something that's been in the works for a few, uh, two to three months now. Um, we've been discussing with them, you know, how things have been going, um, the what's been what's been happening over the past past year, um, and it came to the point where it's the right thing for for everyone for us to, to step away from that. And mm-hmm. um, at the moment, we've we're not have no no more of that beer will be brewed. Right. Um, so. It's just a case of Tesco working through the stock that they that they already have, basically. So you'll see a kind of winding down over a yeah. period of months. But so if people still see the beers there. It's not that they're still being produced. It's just them. No, exactly. The stocks down. Exactly. So so it has it has come to an end. Um, our collaboration, the uh, New England IPA, will cease to exist on the right. Tesco shelves as well. So we won't have any presence in in Tesco anymore. Um, the, the timing of the announcement on the day of the documentary was pure coincidence. I know, I know, I know people will find that very hard to believe, but, but um, it, it's yeah. It, it was discussions have been happening. It was since, happening. It was since, on its way since the end of last year, yeah. um, and it just so happened. I mean, Did it forced your hand a little bit. It, it, I think the timing was we we wanted to work a bit quicker to, yeah. to get the announcement out because of what was what was what was coming. But um, but yeah, it was it was purely coincidental in the end. We'd we'd been working on a, a kind of. A cessation of that contract for right. for, a, for a small period before that. So, getting back into the supermarkets, is that something you'd look at again in the future, but a, a different, a different, doing it a different way, or was that is that it now for the supermarkets? At the moment, it's it. It's, well, I'll never say never in the sense that I think the industry changes a lot, and what the industry needs, what we need, what customers need, how, you know, our relationship with the trade, it changes over time. Hmm. At the moment. We're taking a complete step back from that, right. and like as much as anything, because in our brewery we don't want to take focus off the beers that we do well, mm. uh, off off what we. There was what's so our much, bread and butter. You there know? was so much talk about cloud water beers going into supermarkets, mm. whereas there's plenty of other breweries, craft brewers, who get their beers into supermarkets. Just one or two, uh, one or two beers, and very much under the radar you don't mm. hear much about it but with with you guys there's a huge amount of talk mm. and like you say it almost took the emphasis off your beers then yeah i think i think i understand why that happens and i understand where that comes from we've we've been strong on certain positions for a long uh, for a long period of time I, what, what i would say and is that people are allowed to sh- to change their opinions yeah <laughs> you know and i think i think some of the things we've said in the past some of the things that have that, that have been done yeah, it, they change over time, and we we've, we're constantly reassessing um, how things have worked out for us, for our customers. I th- and I, th- I think on the back of the beers going into Tesco last year, we looked at the situation and thought, actually, there's certain things we could have done better, mm-hmm. and we want to try and make that right. Really, <laughs> you know. So we we put out a couple of statements at the end of last year on yeah. our blog to say this is a reflection on how things have gone these past two years, and. Like some people will see that as PR, PR spin, and I, and I get that too, but they, they can they'll have to take my word for it that they were it was sort of genuine, like heartfelt reflections on. We've gone through a lot of difficult reflection over yeah. the past two months as a brewery, um, and there was a lot of discussion we had internally in the last year, which which was really positive for us, and I think that's that's the expression of it. So. It'll land whatever way it lands with people, so but may- it was genuine, you know, in that sense. So maybe Cloudwater has actually grown as a company off the back of all the tests. I think so. I think so. I think we've I think we've grown on the back of um, a lot of things that have happened over the past two years, and we're focused on what what we need to do really to make to, to make a positive to forge a positive future. So to wrap up, we've got a few quick fire questions for you. We just want to throw them at you and okay. uh, see what answers come back. <laughs> Favorite brewery other than Cloudwater. Um, oh, and Beak at the moment. Favorite beer style? Uh, I I do like a hazy IPA. Favorite country in the world for beer? Um, America, US. It has to be. And the most underrated craft brewery in the UK? Um, a Wild Horse. We discussed them before. Yeah. I think on a small level, they're doing great things. Really like what they do. 
Connor, thanks so much for joining us today. Best of luck on the rest of the tour. Thanks, thanks for having me. We'll see you again sometime. Cheers.